All right, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Coffee crew rolling in. And uh, just before we get started, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for joining us live. If you are, though, watching on the replay, great to have you here. Thanks for watching. But if you want to join us live, as you know, 8 o'clock, I'm like a broken record, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock Pacific time, Monday to Friday. It'd be great to have you join live if you're able to, if you're working, that's okay. I just noticed my camera tripod is in the background. Let's move that out of the way. Look at that. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. We're set. We're set. Coffee here. Coffee crew rolling in. Hopefully everybody's well. Uh, as always, if you have comments, questions, Fire them away in the chat. That's what we're here for. Conversation. It's always a good. It's always a good time. And I noticed this morning that Paul beat uh, beat Candice beat Candice to the punch. Good morning, Paul. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're doing well. And uh, there you go. Beat Candice. That's a that's a that's a tough thing to do. Hopefully you're well. And Candice is here. Coffee donut. Good to have you here, Candice. Channel member. Thank you. Welcome. I need a sip of coffee today. Keep me going. And let's get your, let's get uh, Candace's joke, uh, the joke. This was, and we'll get back to this joke as well. Uh, chat GPT joke, chat, G, eh, chat GPT joke, chat GPT four joke of the day. Let's try that again. How does the beekeeper invest in the stock market? They buy stocks with the ticker symbol B, hoping they'll buzz right up in value. There we go. We'll get back to that, Candace. Uh, Stan, good morning. Good to have you here, which awesome. Awesome. Good to have your channel member as well. And MC channel members, all the, all the channel members are here. That's awesome. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing, doing good. Thanks for tuning in on Tuesday. Uh, Abigail Bailey. Hello. Hello. Hello again. Good to have you here. Two days in a row. Excellent. And yeah, Paul was super early. Uh, Paul beat me here <laughs> and Candace always beats me to the live stream. It's so good. Uh, I'm usually at in front of the computer about usually about 7:30 to kind of get going, get this thing started. But uh, you, the crew, always seems to beat me. Let's get back to that B. That B. Uh, Candace, you you shared the you shared the B symbol, and I thought oh, I wonder if there's got to be a there's got to be a B symbol. So I went down the I went down the rabbit hole of the of the ticker symbol B this morning, and let's let's actually pull let's actually pull this up because it actually exists, and. It's kind of interesting, actually. Uh, not uh, n obviously not financial advice, but there is there is a company that trades. It's in Canada. It's based in Mississauga. It trades under the ticker symbol B E E uh, as B, and they do a. Uh, it, it's like a, a system for beehives where bees will go into the beehive, and then. Go in, they were able to go in one way, and they pick up on their legs uh, like a fun, like a fungus, like a naturally occurring fungus or something like that. And then, as they leave the as they leave the the beehive, they'll go and pollinate the pollinate uh, the flowers for crops. And I guess it what it does is it uh, can increase the yield on crops, uh, helps with uh, different funguses and stuff like that. So pretty pretty interesting. So here I was this morning at 7:30, you know, after can is supposed to be, I'm looking at this uh, this B uh, B solution. Uh, they it's called Vectorite. It's trademarked. Uh, they have all these things that they build into beehives. So go go figure. It actually uh, it actually does uh, does work. Um, it goes through. Um, let's see if I can get this page page going here uh improves improves crop yields there we go uh and then I, of course i had to go over and read their uh so i pulled them up on the on the ticker bee -E, uh penny stock out of out of canada uh so obviously not financial advice um if you wanted to pick some b up you maybe could uh looking at their financials though you probably don't uh definitely pre pre revenue there um looking through some of their quarterly reports fun things you do at uh, 7 30 in the morning uh, checking out v -vec b vectoring technology uh they're still a lot doing a lot of trials uh with different universities uh they're not making any money they're losing a fair, fair bit of money uh so probably not something that uh i'll be adding uh adding anytime uh anytime soon um into the uh into the portfolio and yeah you called it uh be be vectoring technology there you go uh when did you first hear about it mc uh, did, i just heard about it this morning so there's literally no shortage of companies that are out there um trying to save the bee population i guess and working it into pollinating helping to pollinate crops so they have a couple of videos on their website it can apparently increase crop yield by up to 40 percent um uh they have been going around for a while let me see i think they so um 
They've been around for a while. First heard about them eight years ago or so, maybe 10. Okay, uh, let me see. They, they, There you go, pretty close. Yeah, they were founded in, looking at the chart here, they were founded in 2011, uh, uh, according to Google, um, Google Finance. Uh, so there you go. Um, yeah. Uh, believe, believe we can work. Oh, we can do these puns all day. Uh, believe that ChatGPT knew you needed a sweet stock to look at. There you go. Um, I started thinking I should, I should maybe let's add some, let's add some B to the portfolio. But then I started looking at their finance, everything else. And I'm like, eh, probably not. They've been pretty, um, pretty, um, pretty, pretty flat. Um, and not, uh, probably not a this is one of those things that'll either go crazy or you'll lose your money. So there we go. Leave it at that. If anybody is invested in B, let us know in the comments. Um, interesting though. I find these I find these companies that are out there actually very interesting. Uh, there's some. It's just kind of crazy what um, what some of these companies do that you never like even even think of. Uh, and I missed uh, Nadia. Good morning, Nadia. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, yawning today. Get a coffee. Good call. Good call. Uh, another channel member here. Awesome. Always appreciate everybody. Um, and Walmart was looking to develop robot bees for the crop. Interesting. And so going down this bee rabbit hole still, they're looking, they're, they're looking at their, I guess their process as well, looking at it to be able to deploy this, whatever this vector light stuff is uh, to pollinate they're looking at also spreading it via drones. So there you go. It's kind of like robots. Interesting. There we go. It could be the next thing. It could, it could be the next uh, big thing, obviously not fun, not financial advice, but we'll see. Um, it's funny that I can't believe MC had heard of it, have, have heard, has heard about it. Pretty, pretty crazy. Um, what they're, what they're, uh, what they're, <laughs> what they're doing. So we'll get that out. No shortage. Definitely no. Definitely no shortage of like uh, crazy penny um, venture stock, like the TSX Venture Exchange. That is, that is for sure. That is for sure. Um, as we go, so uh, that's all. There we go. So what's going on today? The market kind of yesterday, not the, not the, uh, not the greatest day today. It's kind of everything. Kind of seems to be, you know, not sure what it's doing, but uh, that's okay. I took the took some opportunity. Obviously, yesterday was my, as we mentioned, the day that I do all my purchases. So happy about that. Uh, moving forward with that, uh, woke up this morning. Uh, the channel members will see it on the channel already. Woke up to a couple new, couple more dividends, which is always nice, and uh, got the quarterly. Uh, quarterly dividend for VFV, which was a nice one, and then also BAM came through. Uh, that's part of that Streamyard challenge. So, and also Telus, Telus came through. So that's good. Uh, basically, just rolled them right back into the into the TFSA as a fractional purchase for them all, and uh, called it a day. Uh, so that was good. Uh, although the BAM one was for under a dollar. So you have to the minimum fractional buy is a dollar. So I kind of cheated a little bit with the with the stream hard challenge and upped it to a dollar so I could get it back in. But there we go. So that's good. And Walmart Walmart filed a patent for for uh, robot bees in twenty eighteen. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe we'll have robot bees um, uh, flying around. Uh, there's it's quite popular. I know in gardening. Um, I'm gonna have a garden going this year, so probably. We'll get some bees, hopefully, in the garden. Um, I know you can get uh, those mace up here. There's like the mason mason bees, I think they're called, and you can get little mason bee nests that you can that you can uh, have and put to put for your garden. And I think you can buy bees somewhere. You must be able to, um, or maybe they just find it. I, I I'm I'm new to this gardening thing this year, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's uh, it's it's interesting. Good moral, good for sure. Good moral cause, uh, but not necessarily uh, an investable one. I, mean, I think really the only kind of big thing for this one would be is if it gets you know obviously it gets bought out by somebody, right? Um, or for some reason it really takes off. Uh, looking at B, back to B, uh, they're they have a few say like the sales aren't the sales aren't huge it's very it's kind of it's still very new i guess for for things and uh they have a few contracts kind of sales that they're just starting to get into the states um for different crops um but 
interesting if it takes it just you just need that i guess you know it's that one the company with uh you just need that one big some big company to want to buy it out or uh some big com- huge huge companies to um license i don't know license it or or start to get a lot of uh, a lot of sales it's hard it's hard i know i think probably I, i'm not a farmer but i i'm sure farmers are probably a lot of times like set set in their ways but also um like obviously it's for cost wise it might not make it's hard to know it might not make might, might might not make sense there might be other um other options that are that are less expensive than bee pollination and pesticides and stuff like that but i don't know interesting nonetheless and Zach, good morning. Haven't seen you for a bit. Hopefully you're well. I was actually thinking thinking of uh, Zach this this uh, yesterday, yesterday as we've kind of finished the stream. I haven't seen Zach for a bit, but I know you you've been working, so that's good. Hopefully you're still working and uh, investing in your XEQT. Uh, I I'm still on the fence of with what I'll probably continue this year for me uh, doing my regular purchases of what I've decided to do this year. But uh, slowly looking at looking into diversifying a little bit of in the portfolio into inter- inter- more international stuff. So XEQT will probably be it. Um, stop kind of investing in uh, VDY, VFV, but um, and then and then move into that, uh, starting to get a bit of um, a bit of uh, exposure in other places. Um, so yeah, slowly but surely, but happy with the, por- happy with how the portfolio is doing so far, you know, still, still down, um, obviously still, still in the red with certain things, but, but building happy. It's all, it's, I mean, the balance is around sitting around $15,000 right now. Uh, it obviously stuck certain things down, so it would be over, but, um, it's nice to have that kind of number in front of you, which is good, which is good. Um, Yeah, that's the that's the big thing, MC. I'll read the rest of your comments. It gets, does get cut off. Uh, the whole su- whole sustainability thing is interesting. There actually doesn't feel like there is much demand, but for some reason there's there is a big. Uh, there seems to be a big push behind it. Anecdotally, not many people seem to care. Yeah, we're 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 seeing that, right? There is a big push. I mean, it's even it's even with with things like EVs and uh, green energy. There is a cert, uh, you know definitely a, a a push from from governments for that. Um, but at the end of the day, do people really care? Like you said, do do people actually care? You know, uh, example EVs. Do you know uh, what's it what's it going to take to get every you know everybody or or the vast vast majority to to transfer to EVs as opposed to like a gasoline car? Um, yeah, it's definitely um, at the end of the day you know, or even with energy, stuff like that. And we can, and this is the thing too, in North America, you know, we can, we can care all we want, but if you're talking about, you know, green energy, other, other developing nations don't, you know, don't care (laughs) as well. So kind of what we do doesn't necessarily impact the entire globe, you know? So, um, yeah. And, uh, project finished Friday. Awesome. Oh, good to have you back then. There you go. Well, hopefully you keep working though. That's a good thing too. And yeah, kind of, fla- kind of, it's like flavor of flavor of the bit. You know, they have these targets of you know certain certain numbers of cars on the road. EV. I mean, car manufacturers are getting getting behind it, um, mostly because they're forced to, right? Um, but we'll have to uh, we'll have to see how that does how that does pan out. Um, and I, yeah, I think so. I think that's a little bit too. Most people don't care about EVs. Um, there is the niche people that do, you know, people that do care, right? I don't, I don't want to label them as environmentalists by any means, but there is people that, that care, care about it. And they see the, they see maybe the value of it. Um, but Tesla, yeah, Tesla is, 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 is kind of the, yeah, exactly. Kind of a cool car, I guess. Um, if you talk with, if you kind of talk to people or, you know, see what people want you know if you if you i guess a good poll to put on the channel would be and and let us maybe everybody watching put it down is what if you you know if you had to buy an electric vehicle what one would you buy and i think a lot of people would probably say tesla because it's a cool car it's got it's got that kind of like apple apple factor to it um which i guess is a good thing if you're invested in tesla because if everybody wants if everybody wants one um it's just a matter of getting the um getting the price down for a majority of people to be able to afford it at least i mean at least in at least in countries where people can't af- can't afford and have vehicles right so and yeah that's kind of that's kind of it they've really done the push right they have really gone gone that direction um i think other i don't really follow a lot of other car manufacturers in terms of the volumes that they're creating with um with ev and i think it's 
quite obviously in the big picture quite quite low but they're going in that they're going in that direction right ford has a lot of new evs um hyundai and is it hyundai and kia have their have their platform they're developing now um so yeah interesting um but yeah there wasn't there wasn't that's exactly it there wasn't tons of demand they but they brought out these kind of cool cool cars um ev adoption is a byproduct of tesla being a cool car and a cool brand yeah it's the brand it's the brand thing um that they have they have going for them um the technology is interesting is you know what though um the technology is interesting not so much ev the i mean obviously ev is is interesting but i think the one thing that's really interesting about tesla is the manufacturing that they're, they're building um how they're kind of if you look at how they're building, starting to build, going to be building new cars eventually, whenever they do, right? Cybertruck, it's a whole complete transformation of assembly lines, um, and you know, very um, automated. Uh, so that part I find interesting um, as as well for te for for Tesla. Um, I mean, I own Tesla, so I have to kind of be behind them. I think um, maybe own a little too much. Uh, in terms of the portfolio, but um, it's something that I think in you know the next ten years will be hopefully hopefully a payoff. So there we go. Um, I could see my neck. I mean, I don't. I, I talk about cars a little bit. I'm not a car. I'm not. I'm not really a car person. Um, but I could see my next, probably my next one, possibly being an EV or hybrid for sure. Um, it'll probably depend. I, I don't think I'm probably knock on knock on wood. My car lasts me another you know, minimum six, minimum six to 10, you know, it'd be nice to get another six to 10 years out of the thing. Um, I don't drive a lot, but, um, obviously they do wear out. Um, and, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I obviously don't want, I don't, the price of Tesla's are too expensive for what I would want to budget to pay for a car. Uh, but if they can get their a new, that new models, the new, you know, uh, like the new, what they plan to bring out a less expensive, you know, mass market car might be something I would look at. Yeah. Um, yeah, the gigafactories are really, I find them, I find it very interesting how they're building stuff. Um, definitely they're, it's like literally they've built everything from the ground up to build, to be, um, to build their platform. Right. And it, the cost, the cost they can save by doing this and building all of a good majority. And now already is of the, of their, of their end product is, is built in, is made in house, and I think they're going towards even having like I want to say, made almost a hundred percent of it, controlled and built by them. Um, uh, so that's always uh, I find kind of interesting, and just the robotics involved in it, and that yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Wish them I wish them luck because I own it. <laughs> um, yeah, that was one of the articles I was going to bring up today too. So Tesla, yeah, uh, Elon, uh, Elon uh, if you're on Twitter. Uh, on the web, it was on the web version of Twitter. They switched the icon on the top to the uh, from their logo to the Doge to the Doge symbol, and uh, that was yesterday. Now I don't know if it was like a late, maybe I don't know. It was like maybe a late um, April Fools or something like that. But uh, literally instantly after that happened, uh, I saw I, I'm on Twitter. I I, I kind of have it open all day to kind of read through. Lots of good news on there, and what uh what happened after literally seconds is the price of doge went up about 20 i think it's up now i had it i had it open uh it's up 20 late about 25 about 25 per percent since uh since yesterday and most of that was literally within like an hour of 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 it getting of it getting changed so who knows what's up who knows what's what's up with with all that i i don't i don't know <laughs> but it's always kind of kind of funny um yes the profits are the profits are huge on those higher end on the higher end models no dealerships right they have the i know they have some i i, I think they still have i think well i think a lot of it is on, online ordering now but i i know i know in in vancouver they used to have a like a, a showroom um it wasn't uh it wasn't like a dealership model it was it was like a it was literally like a, a retail store with uh, one car in it uh, that was years ago. I don't, I don't know if they actually still have kind of, uh, showrooms in, in bigger cities. I, I don't think so. Um, but it's interesting, like they, they don't do any, they have no dealerships. They don't advertise any, you know, anywhere really, uh, other than it's literally word, like word of mouth, uh, 
Interesting, interesting how 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 that uh, how it uh, how it works. Um, so there is a room, you know, like you said, profit margin. If they can bring down costs of manufacturing with these new gigafactories, they do have room to obviously adjust prices. And, and the big thing too is is big investments with full self full self driving, and it's um, it's software, right? So after those initial, obviously they'll have to keep investing in it. But after the big chunk of initial initial investing is done, there's they they can they can sell these they can sell these upgrades with software, you know. And it's a good pricing model for sure uh, for different things. Oh, so GTA. Okay, so GTA has a few. I'm, I'm going to assume probably Vancouver must have must have one too. Uh, still, I uh, haven't been downtown in years and years, so. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to definitely look that up. I think, uh, but the app, I, every once in a while I'll go on and price out cars and stuff like that. Um, and then I get the, I get to the build price and I, I might, and then I close the app, but, uh, I think it's the, the app does a pretty good job at, uh, at, at, uh, at selling it. It's pretty crazy that people will, you know, how that's, how that shifted used to the old, the old way of buying cars is you would go, you know, you, you drive, get go drive to the dealership, you'd park, you'd get out, you start looking around, right? The salesperson comes out and what do you look, you know, and you, and then you start looking in and everything. And then you, you know, it's that whole process, right? You buy one, you haggle on, you haggle on the price and the whole thing. And you, you feel like you get the, the dealer feels like they're getting ripped off. You feel like you're getting ripped off and then you go and you go and get it, uh, go into the fun, you know, you walk then into the financing room, they takes a day to tell them, tell you that you, uh, you, you're approved or whatever. And then you have to come back the next day to get it. Whereas now, you know, you can literally go onto your, go onto your phone, put a deposit with a credit card and, uh, buy a car literally on literally all online, uh, sight on uns, sight unseen, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, could, could possibly, uh, could possibly, I mean, obviously what there's, uh, I mean, who knows what, I mean, who knows what will happen with, um, uh, with Twitter, right? That's, that's a, that's a private, his private company, uh, that might do something. Obviously I, there's re there's reasons he bought Twitter. I mean, he, sure he's losing, sure he's lost money, you know, uh, on paper, but he's also bought, you know, when was Twitter, Twitter has been out for 15 years or something like that, 13, 14 years and that much data from people uh i think that's the main reason he bought it uh 15 years of conversations between a global there's there's obviously there's obviously a method i think to his to his madness that, that we'll probably see down the road especially with what they're building with the with ai and the, their bots and robots and all that kind of stuff um and also space like spacex right there's there's uh, there's that well we'll will tesla Will that get rolled into into Tesla? Uh, who knows? Uh, that's one uh, that could go public on its own down the road. Who who knows again? And uh, what else does he have? He also has the uh, is the boring the boring company is that part of Tesla? That I don't know. Uh, there's also that, and there's also um, uh, what am I trying to say? The uh, satellite internet, and that's kind of a bit tied in with space with uh, with SpaceX, I think. Um, Starlink. That's what I'm trying to say starting so interesting interesting times that's for sure we shall we shall see um i don't know i don't i i i'm I, i'll still buy i'll still buy tesla that's one that's actually one um oh sorry that was what it was Neur, Neuralink, right for and so that could be tied in with with twitter with the twitter acquisition at some at some some capacity right um with ai and this i think just the amount of data he that they got out of that um find it uh find it interesting uh, t twitter twitter i find i do find really interesting it's a, it is a really good place for for news like breaking news is it's 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 so fast and and i don't I, I i'm a big lurker on there but there's a lot you can there's a lot and there's a lot of smart people on there uh that you can learn learn a lot from so lots of good things i'm i don't know i'm uh Tesla is one of the positions I do want to build. Maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid a bit too much, but um, I do have that. Small, it's a, it's not a huge, huge position, but it's over. It's definitely over the f kind of, I mean, I typically kind of try and keep individual companies at five, around 5%, uh, but it's a bit over that uh, in my, in my portfolio, but I think that's okay. There we go. I am just going to close off some of my B tabs here. <laughs> uh, 
I've got B financials open and uh, every uh, watch some of those videos on that one too. <laughs> uh, let me just go back, make sure I've got everybody comments. I think I said hi, everybody. I think I did. Yeah. Uh, if anybody hasn't, if you haven't already, hit the like button. It always helps out, helps out the stream, gets it out there. Um, lots of lots of viewers actually have been uh, watching the replays, which is awesome. Uh, seeing seeing more and more more and more people uh, coming over coming over joining the replay, and uh, I have to give a shout out to Jordan uh, from Covered Call ETF Investing. You know, Jordan's got he was on the on the live stream last Friday. It's one of my most viewed one of my most viewed live streams. So that's I think thanks to Jordan getting the word out as well. So appreciate it, Jordan. I, I think you're working, but uh, if you're watching the replay, definitely, definitely really, uh, really appreciate it for uh, for coming on. And again, if anybody else is interested in coming on, I know there's a few other people that watch that have YouTube channels. Candice, you're probably listening in the background. Uh, we have to get you back on as well. Um, I don't know if you want to do a morning live stream or if we set up one maybe on the maybe on one of the weekends or I do owe you I do owe you as well a, a live stream on your channel so uh, if you want me to come over if you want me to head over there happy to do that as well that would be uh, we fun we still we keep saying we keep saying we're going to do it um, we just haven't got around to doing it that's the one thing uh, YouTube have all these aspirations but not enough time sometimes not enough not enough time sometimes in the uh, in the day so. Uh, I was going to bring up, hold on, I had one other, it was the Twitter one, and that was it. Yeah, that was it. If anybody else has anything else uh, on that, let me just see. I think Twitter, I think that the icon, yes, it is still, it is still the Doge one. It'll be interesting. There's always been some talk, too, about with Elon turning, turning, um, because he was obviously involved with PayPal at the time, but he's also talked about turning PayPal, or sorry, PayPal, uh, turning Twitter into some type of payment processor thing as well. And this, the speculation is, is possibly using Doge as the currency. Uh, maybe this is the start. Maybe this is the start of uh, as Doge being the uh, the current the currency on there. Um, but um, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see. Um, funny funny enough with Doge, I actually I've been I've been playing around. Uh, obviously, I, as, I, as you know, I invest in, in crypto, and I, I I I still do my dollar cost averaging on on Bitcoin every day, but I was I, I, this, I stumbled across a video on YouTube with uh, with mining, and obviously it's, it's impossible to mine Bitcoin. I mean, it's not impossible to mine Bitcoin on your computer, but it's not good for your computer, and the chances of actually making any money is is, is super slim. But I was I came across this this video that showed you how to uh, mine Doge, and I just and I was it was done through an app that you could download, and I actually it's funny I last weekend just to kind of learn how to do it and figure it out uh, I was mining I was mining doge on my uh, on my Mac um, I think I have about one one doge coin or something like that after like a day kind of thing uh, it takes a long time to get the, to get them but it was kind of fun it was kind of fun to play it out um, I'm not I'm no longer mining but um, uh, kind of interesting I should have I should have uh, gone all in on with had had, you, had I known I should I could have I mean, not not advice I could have gone all in on all in on Doge and cashed out. Uh, anyways, it will it will happen. Yes, we have to set that up. I will send you. You know what, Candice? I will send you. I will send you an email. And there was someone. There was someone else that I think wanted to come on that was going to start a channel. I don't think they've started a channel yet. Was it Zach? I'm not. Sh I can't totally remember. Um, I know there's that. I know there's quite a few. Uh, one one good thing I found. And I encourage everybody head over to to Blossom. I I don't post a ton on Blossom, um, but I'm again a lurker on some of these things. And there's a, there's quite a few people on Blossom that have that have YouTube channels. So if you're looking for different uh, finance and YouTube channels to to follow, uh, there's some there's some good channels on there that I I didn't uh, didn't know about. Uh, so there's kind of a good way to to um, to follow. Uh, good, good place to find new people in Canada, obviously because of uh, of Blossom. Um, and I know Candice, you're quite active over there now, which is awesome, uh, awesome Blossom. And uh, yeah, it's it's good. I think they're doing some changes to it. To I think to add some. I, I think what I read is to do because everybody kind of always is asking like, how do you track your dividends? And I think they're going to be working something in there to track some some dividends as well. And I don't know if it's going to be a paid a paid thing. Um, I obviously have to try and monetize that that um that app somehow um obviously it's free right now um, other than some sponsors that are on there so maybe they have they're going to have a paid version um but i know canadian investors not not being cheap but being being smart and frugal that might be it might be a tough that might be a tough nut for them to crack uh, they'll have to definitely give some good value if they go to a, basically a subscription model I, people like to hang on to their money we don't blame them uh by uh 
you have to hopefully they give some 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 good value for people to make it uh, make it worth make it worthwhile. Uh, to the last, the last article I had, let me just find my tab here. It was, um, let me find it. There we go. And I know a lot of people that are watching are back East. So this will be similar, but, um, we had we we had the um, this one popped up. Obviously, I'm in the I'm in the housing indu industry as well. But Vancouver saw so home sales down uh, in Vancouver, down 42 percent from a year ago. Um, I can see I can see that the big thing the big thing we're having here in the Lower Mainland uh, for for buyers is there's um, so sales fell 42.5 percent in March from a year ago, and we're 28.4 percent below the 10 year seasonal average. Um, last last month sales totaled 20. 2,535 compared with 4,405 sales in March of 2022 and 1,808 in, uh, in February of 2022. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest thing we're noticing here is there's a lot of people that want to buy, but there's no, no inventory of, uh, of homes. People aren't uh, putting their homes on the market to sell. Uh, biggest thing, a lot of people have concern is they possibly want to move, but on the flip end of that, there's, if they if they sell, there's nothing for them to buy. Uh, so it's like a stalemate right now with uh, with stuff. So there's there's they're actually foreseeing now uh, further price increases as the years go as the year goes on. Uh, be, partly because there's just no inventory. So uh, it's it's I would nef definitely not say it's a seller's a seller's market by any it by any means. But interesting how people aren't uh, people aren't moving uh, kind of unless they really have to. Um, what we're seeing here is if it's if people are moving it's typically if it, it because they moving for uh, employment uh, for a job obviously have family growing uh, need to need to upsize because of that and then also if there's any kind of separation divorce that kind of thing so it's it's almost like forced uh forced kind of uh um uh hap happening um yeah, that's kind of it too. And a lot of people aren't moving because they have a good mortgage rate. Not to say your mortgage might isn't necessarily portable, but a lot of them aren't portable to the same extent that you may think they are. And it just doesn't sometimes make sense for the cost wise, right? Um, so decline of sales is a sign that interest rates are rising is working. Yes. Um, um, and so with the recent drop in shorter term rates, I've noticed real estate picked up in the last two weeks. It, ha it has. Uh, but that being said, uh, a lot of people on the kind of sitting I wouldn't say sitting on the sidelines but like in that mode of waiting because there's a lot of it is like nothing available but there's a lot happening and I think there's a, I think a lot of that is, is starting to kind of pick up um you know in the, in the activity and people wanting to move move start to start to think about moving but then they're not finding the places that they want to get prices are still high uh rates are still I mean rates are started to come down a little bit uh but still 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 higher right than than what they were so it's it's this weird 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 time right now um i mean there might be obviously i think everybody's got other does people have a lot of think a lot of things a lot of things on their mind right obviously with you know inflation still high things are everything everything is expensive so they're really thinking about what they're what they're buying and what they're getting what they're probably getting themselves into uh payment wise on a mortgage right um and making sure that they're able to afford it making sure they're jobs are secure i mean the last thing you want to do is buy a new buy a new house and and have your mortgage payment be more expensive and then one of you loses a job or something like that like there's just it's just people this is exactly kind of what it is mc people like just digesting the like everything that's going on um uh and um uh, and after a while, people with money will eventually just buy it. The first reason to buy probably slightly lower rates. And I think that's, just, I think that will happen as well. I think things will probably, it's going to depend. I think as soon as we kind of, I say that people at work, I think like I think, I think as soon as we see the first decrease of, our, of the prime rate from Bank of Canada, I think that will trigger things to people to kind of get, get, get motivated. Uh, I have a feeling that's my kind of, uh, prediction, but, um, 
but it will be uh, interesting kind of to see. Uh, uh, people who had just barely enough to get into the market probably have moved to renting because they can't get in the market with rates now at what they are. Uh, leading to rents rising. Yeah, rents are rents are rents are definitely uh, ri ri rising. Um, I rent. I sold a home three twenty twenty mid twenty twenty, uh, and didn't get it. was was no plan to get back into the market, um, just for various reasons. Um, but uh, uh, renting is definitely it's not cheap. But again, if you but if you look but the thing the thing with the renting now it's actually like if you actually look at it uh, with the way rates are um, if you have a decent if you have a decent apartment the rents you know and the rents I mean I don't want to say affordable but in your within your budget sometimes the comparable home depending on your down payment and everything else it's actually cheaper it's actually cheaper to rent um, just the way that uh, the way that home prices are um, so it uh, sometimes does make sense and I. For, for me, it works. I like the flex flexibility a little bit. Um, I've been kind of a all over the place for the last the last few years, just with family and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's the reason. Because um, obviously, if you buy something, uh, there's costs. You know, there's costs involved when you decide to sell it. Even if you make, you know, you might make some money, sure, but you might not. And it, it, there's obviously the, the 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 cost of cost of buying and selling, realtor costs property transfer taxes, moving costs, expensive, super expensive to move, uh, higher movers, all that kind of stuff. So, um, sometimes it just makes sense to, uh, not, not own. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't for a while. And, uh, uh, uh Jesse the Great, welcome. Good to have you here. Yeah, it is. It is crazy. It is crazy expensive in BC. It really is. Especially the lower mainland. I don't live on the lower mainland anymore. Um, my mom is out there. They still have the, she's still got the, the house, but, um, I don't, uh, but there's 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 areas there's areas that are I don't I want to say less expensive um, and that's what a lot of people have done a lot of people have moved to the island and in, in BC a lot of people have moved have moved north um, uh, to different to different areas that uh, become more affordable especially with work work from home if that of if that is if you're able to still do that um, a lot of people have moved to the interior still work from home um, I think more companies are wanting people to come back to the office uh, as we're kind of seeing but there is still lots of positions that uh, are are still work work from home, um, and uh, yeah, that's the problem too, right? With uh, uh, they need to bring on more more rental housing, uh, especially especially in in BC for sure. Um, I was when I was in when I was in Calgary, there was there's a quite a number of uh, rental only buildings, so the, it was a bit better there to find but i don't know i think they think they're now calgary is always kind of boom and bust so it's probably the vacancy is probably um a lot lower now but when i was there it was like they were trying to give away apartments um you know if you sign a lease you get you'd get a free month rent and all sorts of stuff parking or internet or whatever to try and keep you there even to renew the lease if you renewed again you got free free month all that kind of stuff so um uh and in the GTA, their goal uh, for rentable was X, but they achieved, yeah, like, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, where I am out on, I'm on the island, uh, MC, there's uh, quite a, quite a number being built here. It's a little small, little t uh, city. Um, and the building that I'm in is all rentals. There's two, kind of two, it's like a, it's, it's not a huge, huge building, like a four, four story building. There's two of them side by side and they're building another, another phase on the other side um so it'll be like double the amount all rentals um i'm not sure how many are in each one probably i don't know probably 200 units in each each one so there'll be more on the other side um and there's still empty space like there's still vacancy here i know that uh so it just depends where you are that's the big that's the big the big thing you kind of have to go and find places and part of the choice to come out here was because it's nice and relaxing and nice near near the beach and um it's um it's that was kind of the choice and rents are rents are less expensive than on the than on the mainland so and i'm fortunate enough because i work from home and i've worked from home for years that it will continue so uh that's always uh that's always good but we do need more we do need more rentals uh, i i saw a thing yesterday in bc they're they're starting to do uh introduce some legislation to to, to start to try and increase that uh there was a thing coming out where the government's looking to give homeowners a like a grant or a loan that is that is can be used to make a like convert their uh, bait like convert their uh, 
a basement or what you know convert part of their house into a into a, a lower like lower cap rental like a, not subsidized but like a affordable like affordable housing i think there's, there must be certain thresholds in terms of what you can charge for rent that kind of stuff uh the loan would be forty thousand dollars and i think it would it would be forgivable after a certain amount of time if you if you rent your place for uh, you know i think it's below maybe below i'd have to get in look into all the details it literally just came out yesterday but like if you rent it out for uh at basically like a uh, affordable how like affordable market housing um, you would be forgiven that loan so that that might kind of help a little bit um, and I think they're also doing some changes with zoning in terms of being able to um, that's the biggest thing is getting permits and all the zoning and everything done for these things uh, to change for I think the lots can build more multiple unit housings in certain size lots um, which which we need right so um, yeah that's that's the big that's the big thing it just depends on i think a lot of the where it is and what what province what province you're you're in um i mean where i am here there's quite a quite a number come up come up quite recently um you can see like the new buildings a lot of the new apartment buildings are all strictly strictly rentals um so that's um it's pretty i think becoming a bit more more common um and the one uh, the one that i'm in they have they have units uh they have units across canada but they have built a number of of new ones out on the island here uh new projects that they have um that they have built and they're okay i mean it, it's an apartment it's 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 nice it's new whatever um that's the one thing about renting is you don't necessarily have the same you know i don't want to say pride of like pride of ownership but it's it's nice it's all it's brand new no one lived in there so it's kind of you know all the appliances work that's the one thing that's nice about renting and you if you're renting from you know a company a management company that own you know that, uh, that owns them you know you typically have you know everything's kept up kept up there's a caretake couple of caretakers here so if you need something i mean nothing's broken because it's brand new but if you need something fixed or adjusted or whatever there's it always is kind of nice whereas if you are renting from a mom and pop sometimes it's it can be kind of not wanting to put the money in you know but this one it's been it's been fine so just uh just kind of de guess it kind of depends i don't know renting not renting's not not all not all that not all that bad it's it works it works out for me less less than what i know what you'd be paying for a comparable mortgage so because what i did notice this is part of the reason for part of the reason for selling i was in a townhouse and everything was obviously everything getting more everything getting more expensive condo fees were going starting to go up and it was getting older like it was getting about it was about 15 years old when i sold and so it was starting to kind of get need more um more maintenance work right some of the fences had to get a lot of the fencing had to get redone starting to have to do painting big project for and then um so you kind of can see stuff that was starting to kind of need need work so you knew assessments and everything else were coming so that was part of the reason um and actually i drove by it when i it was kind of near my mom's but they've they've painted the whole thing now so i know that probably would have been a you know five ten thousand dollar assessment that you just some of these don't want to have to pay with uh with condos plus the condo management fees everything goes everything goes up 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 so so toronto has uh oh okay tons out there in ontario uh, a lot of convert rental apartments affordable housing the modern more modern condos lots of lower income people uh do get pushed uh pushed out oh so they're moving converting rental into into more into building condos yeah um lots of pre-construction that's for sure there's there's a few pre-construction projects around here too i, I can't say i necessarily would get into want to buy one of those pre-constructions depending i think it's kind of risky um but that's uh how they have to do it in order to build these in order to build these things but um i have before bought a pre-construction but i would never i would never do it again they're always delayed they're always you know you can't you want to you want to go into something and i mean i guess if you think people people seem to buy them because they want to try and flip them and assign them assign them um but that can go the other way right as we're seeing certain a lot especially out in on out in ontario uh, some of the projects that are you see on the news where the the, the builder is sold at a certain price a couple you know a few years ago and then 
the value is not there right now and people are on the hook for it. So like any investment, you got to do your, you got to do your research and do your due diligence. And I think, uh, how people people in Canada have this thing that housing always goes up, and as we're seeing right now, it's not, and it can cost it can start costing you a lot more money. Uh, a lot of people that bought rentals that you know finance with rentals on with a, with a line of credit or variable rate mortgage, uh, the rate the rents haven't gone up as fast as their as their mortgage payments, so they're um, it's hard to I think get a get a um, possibly find a rental house apartment or anything that will cash that will cash flow and it doesn't necessarily make sense to have an investment that is not cash flowing um, and losing you money every month but people still do buy them uh, so developers are buying uh, row, row houses old apartment buildings lots tear them down and put up condos some people living there end up having to move out and of course the rent is cheap uh, yeah that's the big thing if you've been renting somewhere for a long time right you're you're not not necessarily rent controlled but the rent is um, definitely below probably market for that uh, unit and that's the that's the hard part um, for moving down we don't have a lot of row houses out in the west here that's more I think uh, on in more uh, Ontario thing uh, for those row more row houses uh, very very few um, I think in the last probably in the last 12 years or so I've I've worked on one file that was a like a row house and it was very unique to the area um, there's very few it was like a townhouse what we would call a townhouse here which is normally stratified um, but it was actually a, a row house that was free freehold title so um, I've seen one where I know uh, where, where I know back east it's definitely more um, uh, more common for whatever reason I don't know why I don't know why that is must be something to do with zoning here or condo strata doc strata corporate i that i don't know we just don't see them all right there we go these are always fun always fun conversations we're quarter two already time goes time goes by time flies by uh again thanks everybody for tuning in uh to the uh to the stream really do appreciate it uh we always seem to have some new uh, some new faces that like to join on and uh, watch, and it's always uh, it's always fun to do these. It's a good good start to my day. Uh, hopefully, it's a good start good start to yours. No matter you know, depending where you are, it might be kind of midday already, but uh, it's always it's always good. Uh, coming up on the channel, I do have to get my my channel update filmed. I I didn't have time yesterday. Uh, I guess that's a good, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, work has been busy, so that's always uh, that's always good. Uh, keeps me keeps me on my toes, um, and didn't have enough time. To, uh, to get that uh, video video recorded. So I will uh, to get that done in the next couple of days, I promise. Uh, but as always, uh, we'll be alive. We'll be live tomorrow. It's always kind of fun to go on, go on these things. Um, I do appreciate everybody taking the time in the morning. Uh, special thanks again to the channel members for joining the channel. Really appreciate it. If you check out the community tab today, you've got the new dividends that are on there uh, that came in. Uh, if you are invested in any, some of the ones that I am, check your check your account. You probably have some dividends there, which is always nice. Uh, nice to kind of get those and and reinvest. See those see those snowball. And um, that's all. That's all I have. Uh, Take care, everybody. We'll catch you. I will get the tomorrow's live stream posted on the uh, channel. And we will see you 